season and came and set the club and lost some of the values that it had when you broke through and when we sort of spring into the charge. I think you, I think you touched on it there in your answer to Tom, but to what extent um, will the culture changing the culture of this club be, be kind of as important as changing the, the football? Yeah, it will be. I, you know, my philosophy, sort of my philosophy, I hate using buzzwords, but on, on culture is, it, it, to me, it's just people. You know, it's people who define an environment. It's very easy for me to come in and say, look, this is what I want the culture to look like and I've got people that don't fit in it, don't have the personality or the characteristics or the behaviour. So that's the first thing you've got to understand is what kind of people we have and, you know, um, the values that I hold dear, I think, uh, are, are reflective in a lot of the values that this football club have in terms of ideology around playing the way you play football, but also, you know, my... My sort of um, basis for for culture or behaviour is just, you know, we're all very fortunate to do what we do. There isn't a person who comes through these gates sh that shouldn't come through with a smile on their face, particularly the footballers and, and us. Um, so it starts there, you know. If, you, if you've got an appreciation and a respect for, for your environment and the people there, then I think that, again, gives you a good chance to, to create something, you know. If, and, and sometimes people need direction with that, you know. If, if there's no clear direction or clarity around what that's supposed to look like, then, you know, people can go off and do their own thing. I understand that. But, I, you know, I'll, I have been and I will be pretty clear about my expectations around, you know, what I, what I think we need to be, you know, be like as a, as a group, a group of players, a group of staff, a group, you know, as, as a football club. And I don't think that's too far from the kind of things that Harry was talking about. And in terms of style, you said aggressive and dominant. I think it's fair to say that under the last few coaches, Spurs haven't really played that way. It's been more kind of counter-punching. It's been quite thrilling, but they've been quite a lot kind of sitting back and soaking up pressure. Is, is it harder, therefore, to, to kind of change the style? Do you have to almost reprogram the, the players within your role? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that'll, be, that'll be the biggest challenge. And it's why I'm sort of, that's what I'm concentrating on at the moment is... You know, we don't obviously have the whole group here, but even with the guys we have here, it's just about changing that mindset a little bit and um, and, and changing, you know, the kind of way players see the game and, and maybe their roles within it because, you know, even even the positions they play, there's going to be adjustments to the way I, I want them to do things. So, um, but again, I love that. That's, that's why I'm here. You know, if it was kind of me just rolling up and, you know, them going out there and doing their thing, it, it wouldn't excite me. So, you know, that's part of the challenge that... It will be a, a bit of a shift from what the, the way the club's played the last sort of three, four years, and um, you know how quickly the players embrace that, and and the new players coming in will help because you know that's the part that you know we have control, or I have control over, you know whether that's you know, you know James Madison or or Guillermo and Goal. I mean they're players who I think will fit in the direction we want to go to, which which helps, and then it's about seeing you know the existing group, you know how many of them sort of are able to adjust and embrace the, the way we're going to play. And, and just on Madison, I think he feels to a lot of people like a, a real Tottenham type player. Can, can you just talk a little bit about what you like about him, you know, his, his qualities that he brings into your team? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, really excited to get him, you know, as part of the group. He's, you know, I think any manager will tell you that, um, you know, part of the key to, to trying to be a dominant team is to have you know, multiple attacking threats and having a midfielder who can score goals create, um, they're not easy to come by. And he's proven himself at that level um, in the last you know, few years as, as somebody who can do that. And I think, um, you know, even, even just at the outset, when you look at Tottenham the last few years, it's been really reliant on sort of the front three to, to get most of their goals. And um, I thought it was a real good fit for us to look for a player like James and even better if we could get James. So we ended up getting James. So, um, you know, it was, um, you know, I was really pleased. That, and, and the fact that we did it early was great because it allows him now, you know, he's had a break. He's had a birth of twins. So, mate, I don't know what shape he'll be in when he gets here. But, um, you know, once we get him in, it means he can come on the tour with us. And I know he's really excited about joining the group. He obviously knows a few of the lads. but And I think he's in a stage of his career where he feels like he can be, you know, a leader in that context. And I think that, that's great as well because we're going to need, you know, players who 
want to embrace that responsibility within this group, whether that's their first year in or they've been here for ages, is that we're going to need some leadership on the field and I think he feels like he can he can be a, a player that does that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you.